Hello everyone, as you can see I'm finally back after taking a <clears throat> short break from making YouTube videos. You may have also noticed that I changed my channel's name, but that's not really anything important. What is important however is the topic of today's video, which is this Hi-Zack model from Bandai. It's different from anything I have ever tried building before, so this will be a fun new experience for me. As you can probably guess, the box contains parts! <laughs> what a surprise! What is interesting, however, is that all of the pieces are molded from colored plastic, and that is because the kit can be assembled without painting. But I will paint it anyways, because painting is my favorite part of every model build. Alright, let's finally start assembling the kit. It's important to note that this model can be assembled without using any glue, just like some 170 seconds Vesda kits. Though I will glue it together anyways, because, you know, I'm a rebel. <laughs> I'll also quickly mention a small tip that can help you save a bit of money. Instead of buying dedicated modeling cement, you can use cellulose thinner instead. It actually works the same way while also being much cheaper. And here is how the model looks right after the assembly. I absolutely love the articulation of this figure, as it allows for some cool dynamic poses as well as some more... questionable ones. Anyways, time to fill all of the gaps. And boy, does this kit have quite a few of them. Almost every section of the kit needs filling and sanding, which is an unfortunate side effect that comes with the way the kit is built. But it's not really anything I'd complain about too much. After all, most model kits have more or less gaps, right? As I said in the title, we're making this model the armor modeler way. So let's start with one of the easiest, yet one of the most effective techniques one can use on their model, and that is applying the armor textures. As you can probably guess, I didn't really have access to a few real-life reference pictures to base the textures on, so I just determined which parts should be textured by myself. Some of you might already know how armor textures are created, but I'll quickly explain it for those of you that don't. The process is actually very simple. You just dilute Tamiya grey pot with modeling cement and then apply it on the model surface with a paintbrush. Depending on the finish you are going for, you either add more or less cement. You can also apply the putty in a couple layers. It all depends on your personal taste.
After applying the texture, the model looks like a horrible mess because of all the bright colors peeking through. But don't worry, the look it'll give to this figure after the paint job will be absolutely worth it. Alright, let's now make the model look even more heavy metal by creating weld beads out of epoxy putty. For this task, I'll use these two homemade welding beads. One being made from a toothpick and a piece of aluminum from a soda can, and the other being a piece of leftover sprue that I sanded down into a chisel. The process of creating weld beads is actually very simple, although it is quite time consuming. First, you mix the two components of the epoxy putty, and by the way, be sure to get the quick type putty. Then you need to roll it between two plastic sheets into a very thin model. And after that you just place it wherever you want the weld to be and punch in the texture with the previously mentioned tools. Also, be sure to dip the tools in water every now and then to prevent them from sticking to the putty. Otherwise you might accidentally rip out the weld from its place, completely destroying it. I am creating two types of welds on this model. The chisel is used for these multi-pass welds. I just punch in many short horizontal lines. The other tool is used for creating welds that create a caterpillar looking pattern. If you want to learn more about making weld beads or just textures in general, I would highly recommend you check out the video made by Nightshift. He explains the entire process much better than I ever would. In some places, I also create shallow grooves for the weld beads using a scribing tool, and afterwards I make them a bit wider using a sharp knife. Okay, I lied when I previously said I'm only making two weld types on this model, as I'm actually making three. However, this one doesn't require anything aside from a knife and some cement. I simply make many many small cuts on some edges and then soften the texture with the aforementioned cement. Now the last thing I'm going to do is a flame cut texture on some parts. It's very similar to the previously made welds, because it also requires making multiple small cuts and softening with cement. However, I create the effect on the thin sides of some armor plates instead of the edges. And I think that would be all for the assembly process, and thus all for today's video. I had quite a lot of fun building this model, so you can definitely expect to see more of these gunpla kits on this channel in the future. Also, you can check out my Instagram as I post some pictures of my models there. Link is down in the description. Anyways, thank you all for watching and see you in the next video, in which we'll give this figure some nice colors. Adios!